Alrighty. Okay. So tonight we have moved on to a new lesson, lesson 18, which is principles for worship. And um, last week we studied uh, lesson 17, how to make good decisions. And then there were one, two, three, three. oh, just two, just two um, 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 points that we went over about making good decisions. The first one was be aware of demonic influence. And the second one was be aware of your own influence. And so that was a really good lesson on last week. And even our pastor got to join in. And so we appreciate that. So tonight we are on uh, lesson 18, Principles for Worship on page 75 in our journey into biblical problem solving book. And our scripture reference tonight will come from 1 Corinthians 11, 2 through 16. Um, I, I wanted us to uh, to read that if um, if I can get a couple people to read for me because um, I know some people get to read it, some people don't. Um, but if everybody did, that's fine. But let's just go ahead and go over it. Um, let me see. If, let me see. Hold on. Let me count. How many? Well, we got 16, so that's what, eight and eight. If I can get someone to read the first eight. I can read the first eight. Okay, and then someone to read the last eight. I'm sorry, well, yeah, the last of it. Um, so, so two, two to I can nine. read the second half. Four, five, six, seven, yeah, two to nine. Um, two to nine. Okay. Who was the second? Who was the other Roxy. one? Roxy. Oh, I can oh, read the second. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Okay. 10 through 16 for Sister Roxy. Okay. Okay. I'm going to read from the NIV. I praise you for remembering me and everything and for holding, holding to the traditions just as I pass them on to you. But I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is man and the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with the head covered dishonored his head. But every woman who prays or prophets with her head uncovered dishonors her head. It is the same as having her head shaved. For if a woman does not cover her head, she might as well have her hair cut off. But if it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaved, then she should cover her head. A man ought, ought not to cover his head since he is in the image of and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. For men do not come from women, but women from men. Neither was a man, neither was men created from women, but the woman for men. Good evening, everyone. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. So a woman should wear a covering on her head as a sign of authority because angels are watching. But in relationships among the Lord's people, women are not independent of men and men are not independent of women. For although the first woman came from man, all men have been born with, I mean, born from women ever since and everything comes from God. What do you think about this? Is it right for a woman to pray to God in public without covering her head? Isn't it obvious that it's disgraceful for a man to have long hair? And isn't it obvious that long hair is, is a woman's pride and joy? For it has been given to her as a covering. But if anyone wants to argue about this, all I can say is that we have no other custom than this. And all the churches of God feel the same way about it. Amen. Amen. Thank you both for reading. So um, 
when you when you read the scripture, it seems, of course, Paul was really speaking of, you know, the proper custom for what a man should wear, what a woman should wear. And um, you start getting into that and you're like, well, what does that have to do with us now? <laughs> you know, but of course, you know, back in that time, they had certain customs and certain um, things that men men did and then women did. And of course, now it's times are totally changed, as you can see. And so we don't, um, most customs now, they don't go by those things. It's changed since then. Okay, you have to look, that was like the first century. We're like, we're in the, what, 21st century, or whatever, you know, so like we're in 2023 and you're talking about way when Paul was, <laughs> was living. So it's changed a lot. But here, um, our title is called Principles for Worship. And if someone, what is a principle? What is the definition of a principle? Anybody? Definition of principle. Okay, so I'll give you my definition of principle. I have a fundamental truth or a proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior or for a chain of reasoning. Now, can someone tell me the definition of worship? You could Google it if you need to, or if you got a dictionary on your phone. <laughs> Worship is to praise uh, or, or honor God. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to add to what Mr. C said? This is giving, uh, it's a feeling or expression giving adoration. Mm -hmm. to God. Okay. It's an ex expression of, of reverence to God. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. So we're looking at, um, uh, a fundamental truth or proposition um, of, of how we should worship, you know, the right way to worship, the correct way that we should worship. And um, in this lesson, we're going to go over three points that Paul pointed out, I'm sorry, that the, the author in, of this book point, um, pointed out that should be principles for worship. And the, the principle, the first principle is respect spiritual leadership. The second principle is remember the partnership. And then the last uh, uh, principle is reinforce the fellowship. So if I can get um, someone to start reading um, right under uh, respect spiritual leadership. Well, go ahead. No, read at the beginning. I'm sorry. Just read at the beginning as Paul prepares on page 75. You want to do it? Okay, I'll start off. <clears throat> okay. As Paul prepares to deal with yet another controversy at Corinth, he first gives the Corinthians a word of praise. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Paul is referring to basic ordinances that are the fundamental truths of our faith. In dealing with a problem, it is always best to begin with, the, with a compliment. Since Paul is a master problem solver, this is how he begins to resolve the worship problems at Corinth. The pa this passage reveals several worship principles to remember. First, respect spiritual leadership. Paul begins, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. The key to understanding this verse is the word head. Head refers to leadership and authority. Therefore, this verse could be translated, a man is responsible to Christ, a woman is responsible to her husband, and Christ is responsible to God. 
Every wife should encourage her husband to be the spiritual leader of their family. The husband is not to be a ruthless dictator, nor is the wife to be a domestic doormat. How does Paul sum up everything God has to say about the husband-wife relationship in Ephesians 5 and 33? Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. A husband who loves his wife will be spiritual servant leader of the family as Christ is, setting the proper spiritual example for her and their children. If a wife respects her husband, she will support his position as the spiritual leader of the family. You can stop right there. Okay. When I um, uh, when I read this, the first point, respect spiritual leadership, and we know that you know God is the head, and then under God is is the man, and then the wife, and then the, the children. And if you know, if some of you have ever noticed, a lot of times you will see a lot of women and children in church but not necessarily all the time of the husband. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you may see the whole family, but a lot of times you'll see the wife and kids, but not the husband. And if the word is telling, you know, saying that a husband who loves his wife will be the spiritual servant leader of the family, then, you know, that means Christ is not head of him. <laughs> He's not making Christ head so that he can be able to lead his family the right way. You know, it, it should not be the wife is the leader because it's out of order. That's not the correct way it should be. So um, when I see, you know, women and the children there, and I'm like, well, why the, why the husband not with them? You know, and of course, it could be something, I don't know, you know, they could, you know, I've, I've heard different, you know, sayings, oh, this happened or this happened, or, you know, I don't that preacher, he ain't this and this and that. And it's, it's a lot of excuses, basically. <laughs> that's what that's what they're giving. Because how can you sit there and stay home and watch your wife and your children go to church and, and get stronger in God and you not? You Then, you know, then how would you expect your wife or your children to even respect you? And they wouldn't, but I mean, you're not even being leader of the home. You know, you're not, you're not taking that time to be, to lead your, 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 your family to Christ, you know, in the right way and be the example. You know, what if you have, what if they have a son? If the son see the daddy sitting at home, you know, well, then he's like, well, daddy sit at, at home, why do I have to go? You know, then your kids start asking why they have to go, <laughs> especially if daddy's there, you know. And, uh, and that's vice versa. I mean, there, there could be somewhere the, the husband and the kids go and the wife stay home, it, you know, but the fam, the it should be a unit. It should, the whole family should be involved. And um, I had a question here. What are some other ways that we can um, respect spiritual leadership? What are some um, other ways that we can respect leadership? Spiritual leadership. But not going over their heads. Okay, not going over their heads. I've, I have support them in all ways, any way they need it. Anybody? Pray for them. Pray for them. I have that. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, anybody else? Follow them. Follow them. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I, you, you and Brother Ray had exactly what I have. I had to serve gladly under them and love them sincerely. You know, um, they're your leaders. They're, you know, that's your leader. You have to be, you have to be respectful. You have to respect them. Just like you respect your boss that's over you. You know, I mean, some of them don't, <laughs> but, you know, they should. But yeah, you know, um, it's, it's important that we show uh, the respect to spirit for spiritual leadership. 
because you know if you're not being respectful that means you 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 you're being disrespectful to God because he's the head he's he's head over all of us you know he's he's our 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 main person and if you know if it's not in order you know then it's 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 just out of order <laughs> it's not in order it's just out of order <laughs> all right uh, Sister Ursula, if you could um, continue reading now, Paul writes. Sister Ursula. Hello. Oh. Now Paul writes about worship etiquette. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. How does Paul explain what it means to prophesy in 1 Corinthians 4 and 3. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Here is a great way to remember the difference between praying and prophesying. Praying is talking to God about people while prophesying is talking to people about God. Paul uses the word head twice in verse four. The first head refers to a man's physical head. However, in light of verse three, the second head refers to the spiritual head who is Christ. In contrast, Paul writes, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head, which is her husband. 11 and 5a explanation added, this verse clearly reveals women were active in the early church. In Paul's culture, it was disrespectful for married women not to cover their heads. They usually wrapped a shawl or scarf around their heads. Decent, de decent women always wore such head coverings in public. Those who didn't were considered rebellious or prostitutes. It would be much like a wife wearing a bikini to a worship service today. Such an action would be humiliating to her husband. Apparently, some of the women believers in Corinth had stopped wearing head coverings. This dishonored every humi even humiliated a wife's head or husband they may have misunderstood what Paul wrote earlier about men and women after his first missionary journey. What is it, Galatians 3 and 28? All are one in Christ. Okay, you can stop right there. Okay. So in here, Paul was, was saying that if a woman um, at the, you know, that was praying or prophesying that, the, you know, uh, didn't wear, uh, wore her head uncovered, she was dishonoring her husband. And, um, and of course, we don't really, you know, you don't, we don't get all of that because you like what's what they have to do with it. But it, it was important, you know, when, when uh, there's certain, like for different cultures, um, some Muslim women, they wear they wear their heads covered when they come out in public. They don't show their hair. That's that's a culture. That's a cultural thing for them, you know. And um, you know, we respect that. That's what they that's what they do. You know, I don't question why. I mean, that's that's just something they do. But um, but if that's how they had it, then that's how it should have been. And then it said that some of the the women started not doing it. <laughs> So I don't know if they were just being, uh, they was basically being disobedient, I guess, you know, getting a little sassy with it and deciding they didn't want to wear head coverings and all that good stuff. And so they they pretty much compared them to be rebellious or prostitutes. Kind of harsh. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, because now you're just being disobedient, you know, especially if there are um there's an order to everything. You should, you know, stick to what, you know, what it is. So I started laughing when it said it would be much like a wife wearing a bikini to worship service. And I'm like, I really hope I don't see nobody bus out with a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope not, 
but um you know we do have to just be careful even because worship is it's you know you have to you have to be um what's the word everything about you is worship you know what you're wearing how you're presenting it you know so if you're up there you know doing praise and worship and you got on a little short dress or a little short skirt or you got slits in your pants and you and skin hanging out i mean it's distracting you see what i'm saying or if your hair is pink hair purple you know those those things are becoming distracting and we're not people can't focus on what you're saying people can't focus on the the lyrics that they're trying that you know it's not ministering to them because they're so focused on the outside uh go ahead sister taylor i see your hand uh good evening everyone uh, i just had a quick question um regarding like the um the head coverings and all of that um well my my dad's side of my family they're Jehovah's Witnesses and I noticed um like when we would pray at their house and like her husband um he would say the prayer she would always like cover her head because she was like it was a sign of respect or something so do you think that's kind of where they got that from like from that scripture or where where they were saying that um Pastor, you gonna, can you answer that? Well, I don't know where they got that from. Yeah. But, but I, I mean, I don't know. And what I mean is, I don't know why certain people practice certain things because over, over time, people have done things for so many years, but they have no clue. Right. As and so, but in Paul's day, what was happening was, they wanted to distinguish the prostitute women from the church women. And so the prostitute women did not have their head covered. So, so that a Christian woman would not be mistaken, you know, to be a woman of the world. So she had to look distinctive. Mm -hmm. And okay. so, so for us, it's about our distinctness distinctiveness. Now, a lot of these traditions and things we've gotten away from, um, you know, some men wear hats in churches now, some don't, you know, some take their hat off when they get ready to pray and different things like that. But I think the principle here is we need to be mindful of our appearance and what we dress like and what we look like so that we won't be mistaken to be like anybody else mm -hmm. you know I, I think that's very important because there's a fine there's a fine a thin line between the way the church folk dress and the way work the world dress and so some things we we have a lot in common we blend in with the world really well Mm -hmm. You know, but we have to be very, very careful, you know, and that's why the scripture encourages us to make sure we modify uh, spiritual beauty and not get caught up in braids and earrings. And I'm not saying those things are wrong, but I'm just saying, you know, what are you advertising when you go out? You know, uh, there are certain clothes my mom encouraged me not to wear because she did not want me to look like the other young men and get stereotyped or, uh, you know, things like that. I, you know, and I remember one encounter I had where I got held at gunpoint because I was dressed, I was dressed like a group of young men that I didn't even know. And, and the guy accused me of trying to jump him, said I was with the other guys. And, and I was like, no, sir, I, I don't know nothing about it. But it made me change the way I dress. I said, man, I want to be different. I want to look different. I don't want to look like nobody else. I just want to be a good Christian, you know. And, and, and Jesus gets the glory from my life. And I live long, too. <laughs> 
Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for that. Reverend Bugaj, you can go ahead. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, first lady, you, you call me, you can call me crazy. And I, I get that the views, what they mean, uh, religious works. But if a woman has on a view and under no circumstances, she can remove it. And the roach flying there, she coming out of that view. We all know that. <laughs> yeah, she coming up out of that. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Reverend. Oh, God, it's so funny. Um, and Pastor actually said, what I was going to mention as far as, um, you know, you know, how you notice when men, if men are wearing hats, a lot of them will take the hat off before they go in the church or like pastor said, if they're going to, uh, pray or anything like that, they'll take, they'll remove the hat and it's out of respect. It's out of obedience, you know, things like that. Um, and as pastor said, and even sister Mimi put in here, it's, we have to have a modest look, you know, um, you know, we, when you're up, you know, when you're up there, you know, especially, you know, when you're up there serving God, when you're, whether you're singing, whether you're praying, whether you're, whatever you're doing, you know, the focus should be on what is being said and not at your outer appearance, you know, and like I was saying, you know, you don't want to um, you don't want anything that's distracted and, and taking everyone's attention off of God, because that's the main thing. Worship. We should be worshiping and not thinking of anything else other than worshiping God. You know, at that time when we're up, um, regardless of what we're doing, uh, it's reverence. We're, you know, it's a reverence thing and, uh, we have to be respectful you know, and like Pastor said, we got to be different, you know, and, and you, we shouldn't, we shouldn't look like the, the world anyway, and so when, when you start looking like them, how can, how can we tell who's who, how can we tell what you are if, if you're looking like them, so it's just a matter of, you know, just being respectful and just being mindful that you are not you may live in the world, but you're not of the world, you know, so just, you know, just keep those things in mind. Uh, but thanks for uh, everyone who shared. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to where were we? Um, let's, um, let's move to the second point. Um, yeah, let's move on to the second point. If I can get a new reader. Uh, remember the partnership on page 77. You say 75, right? We're on 70, 77. We're on, we're on the oh. second point, remember. That's okay. Um, I just didn't finish that part, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> okay, remember the partnership, 11, 7, 12. The issue is married women in Corinth were disgracing their husbands by refusing to wear customary head coverings defying their husbands, spiritual leadership and making themselves look like prostitutes. Therefore, Paul writes, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. God originally created the woman as an help meet for him. Paul's point is that a wife should help and support her husband. The best way to do this is by showing him respect and never doing anything to embarrass him or to discourage him from being the spiritual leader. Keep going. Uh, yeah, you could, um, yeah, go to the Finish. next. Okay. Stop right there. One, <clears throat> one of the basic emotional needs of a man is admiration. Honest admiration is one of the greatest motivators of men. Nagging and criticism cause a man to become defensive and difficult, while admiration energizes and motivates him. In other words, a husband needs his wife to be his chief admirer and cheerleader. How does Proverbs 31, 12 describe a godly wife in regard to her husband? Want me to give you my answer? Yes, you can. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. You can stop right there. Uh -huh. I thought this was a, a good point here. Um, 
because, you know, um, partnership is important. And a husband, a, a wife should always support a husband, especially, you know, if it's a pastor, he should support her anyway. But, you know, if he's a pastor, she's a first lady, um, or, you know, it just, you know, it doesn't matter. But uh, one thing that, you know, you have to be careful of too, as it says, you don't want to do any anything to embarrass your husband, especially if he's, um, you know, a, a, a pastor of a church or anything like that. And um, I actually um, seen this a video. Uh, I seen it on social media and it was a, a lady. I don't know the name of the church. It was in somewhere in North Carolina and she was the first lady and she was speaking. I don't know if she was speaking I think it was at a church, I, I think. And apparently her husband was cheating and he was a pastor. And while she's up speaking, she actually talked about the lady and knew the lady name and everything and said the lady name. And when I tell you I didn't see anything first lady about this lady while she was speaking, I mean, she was straight up the world. She was so, I mean, I was just sitting there with my mouth open for the, everything that she was saying. And she was boastful and bragging. And, you know, I was just like, I mean, she was saying she will fight the lady. And I'm just like, oh my God. And I just cannot believe it. And I'm like, and these, and then the bad, the worst part about it, the people in the in the audience was amen and the stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, are you serious? And it bothered me because when you see things like that, it it and the people then you start seeing people talk about the church, and that's the first thing I start hearing. That's why I don't go to church. People in the church act just like we do. Why do I need to go to church? You know, and I'm saying it makes all of us look bad when you act like that. First of all, that was a private matter, matter between you and your husband. That shouldn't have even been brought up like that. It didn't even need to be brought up in front of anybody. And, um, you know, so... You know, so now you have embarrassed yourself, embarrassed your husband, and, you know, you're just making the church look bad at this point. You know, you know, so we have to be careful, you know, um, and vice versa, because I have seen where husbands em embarrass their wives <laughs> in public, you know, so it's, it's important that you support one another. You know, I shouldn't do anything as a first lady to embarrass my husband anywhere, whether, you know, we're, in, uh, you know, at church or wherever, I have to be careful about my actions, just as he does the same for me. Because, you know, we're representing God when we're, when we're out there, you know, and I don't want to do anything to hinder my husband's spiritual journey, his walk, my, I don't want him to hinder mine, you know, so, it's, you have each other's backs. That's what, you know, it's a, this is a union. And so we have to be careful with what we, you know, what we say, what we do, how we act, you know, ours are everywhere. And you just have to be very careful, you know. Go ahead, Reverend Bugaj. Uh, yes, ma'am, I, I totally agree. Um, even outside of the church, um, whether the husband is away from his wife, he was a representation of her as well. And um, even when she's a part, you know what I mean? Like, no matter where we do or where we are, we still represent our spouses, uh, even if it's not in the church. And that's um, very important to, to realize. Exactly. And because I'm a first lady when I leave my house and go to work. I'm a first lady while I'm in the grocery store. I'm a first lady while I'm at the post office. It don't matter where I'm at. That's, what, that's who I am. You know, I'm a child of God. I'm a Christian. I'm also a first lady. I'm a, I'm a wife. 
I'm a mother. So I have to remember who I'm representing when I'm out there. And, and that's for all of us, whether if you're married or not, you still, you know, don't want to bring embarrassment to yourself or to anyone else. And you still have to be careful. But just remember the partnership. It's a partnership thing. You know, we just have to be very careful. Um, you know, watch the company you keep. You know, you you have you never know who's listening and who's watching. So you just got to be very careful. I, I like to make Go ahead. Comment. Go ahead. What stays on my mind is um, these, uh, I would just have to say Muslim countries where the men insist that the women wear head covers and they get very upset when the woman takes it off. And they have also killed them for uncovering their hair. And I didn't realize until we were in this lesson that the reason was they felt disrespected by the woman. They did not respect the men or the, the, the husband. And I don't know whether they're doing it now out of disrespect, uh, they're saying they're being disrespected or whether it's just so much of a tradition that they expect they expect the woman to do this. But this is a, a very serious or delicate matter today because women have been uh, <laughs> Americanized mm -hmm. where American women don't wear these. And so everyone is taking them off now and showing their hair and um, you know they want head covers, face covers, and all of that. So I think uh, um, you're right. I agree with Pastor. It's traditional, mm -hmm. uh, and it's important for us to realize that this thing is is bigger than us. But I like what you said, First Lady, when you said um, things have changed, mm -hmm. and it is a different custom here. So I like that. I, I, I just, that was on my mind. So I just had to say it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sister Debbie? Yeah, I just like to say that at, you know, the school that I go to, uh, we have a lot of uh, Muslim kids that, you know, go to our school. I mean, we have a lot. When I say the almost half of them are, and they're all covered up. The girls, they're covered up. You, their heads, the whole body is covered and they all travel together in groups and everything. And the boys, the boys are the same. They all covered up, even the, even the boys are covered up. Cause at one time we were having an issue with them against our regular kids. You know, they were like, you know, having issues with them. But I, I'm, I'm thinking those kids are still they're following that, they're still like following that tradition, even as young kids. So, uh, and uh, I, it's just, it's just something about them. It's like they, they're so, they're very respectful. And I, and I noticed that about them, you know, people give those kids a bad rap because the kids tease them at school just for wearing their coverings and stuff, which is sad. But I'm just, uh, and then y'all, what y'all talking about this is I see that every day. The kids are covered, the, the girls are covered and the boys protect the girls. I noticed that they're very protective of them. Very protective of them. Thank you, thank you. That's, 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 that's interesting. And, um, and most of the culture, like Muslims, <clears throat> they, they, teach in their, they teach their kids young the traditions and they keep it, you know, as, until they get married and have their own families and things like that. Um, us, on the other hand, we, we tend to get out of our traditions sometimes, you know, we break tradition or we tie the traditions. Um, not everybody, but, we, you know, sometimes we do get out of our traditions that, that we, you know, were raised with and things like that. But, uh, but overall, um, you know, as Pastor said, traditional and contemporary does clash. They're clash. They clash. So, 
Um, but that, that was a, a, a good thing that I just wanted to say is that, uh, Pastor, you don't have to worry about me. I'm always be your cheerleader. Uh, I'm there for you. Uh, if I could do a high jump and a split, I would do it, but I can't. <laughs> you're going to have to hit that gym. Huh? You're going to have to hit that gym. <laughs> I can't do that no more. <laughs> but, uh, but, but seriously, you know, for all seriousness, though, you know, I, I, I always want to make sure that I support my husband 110%, you know, 150, whatever. Um, and, you know, so that's that. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, you could go ahead and if you want to continue to read, uh, Sister Mimi, you could go ahead and finish that section and then we'll go to the last point. Okay. Paul continues for the cause of the woman to have power <clears throat> on her head because of the angels. We can't be sure why Paul mentions angels, but it could be because angels show respect, reverence, and submission when worshiping God. Next, Paul writes, nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. The principle is a husband and wife are to complement one another and be a team or partnership in the Lord. God demands that as the spiritual team captain, a husband must treat his wife according to knowledge and with honor the reason is found in the last phrase of first peter 3 7 what is it so that your prayers may not be hindered mm -hmm. keep going okay if husbands are not considerate and respectful of their wives they are in big trouble with god nothing reveals a man's spirituality like how he treats his wife to emphasize the equality of men and women paul writes for as a woman is of the man even so is a man also by the woman but all things of god Eve's beginning created from Adam's rib doesn't contradict the fact both were created by God. Therefore, neither a husband nor a wife should act independently or superior to the other. Instead, husbands and wives are to obey that, no, obey what command regarding each other in Ephesians 5.21. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Keep going till I get to the next point. Yes, ma'am. After this statement, Paul writes, the most detailed passage in the Bible regarding the husband-wife relationship. Important principles to remember and worship are respect spiritual leadership, remember the partnership, and also reinforce the fellowship. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, um, you know, it, it did make a good point down here when it says that um, husbands are, are, if husbands are not considered, considering and respectful of their wives, they are in big trouble with God. Because, you know, you know, some of these husbands are abusive. You know, some become abusive uh, verbally, physically, emotionally. And that's not how God intended on that to, to be at all, you know. And so, you know, and, and even for the women, you know, I've seen where some women control the husband. <laughs> You know, and you definitely know that's not how God intended to be because the man is the head. And, you know, and some in some households, the women is the woman is the head. You know, they take charge, they make the decisions, they control everything. And um, that's not, you know, how God intended it to be. But, you know, just, you know, making sure that um, you know, that the husband is treating the wife with respect because if you're not treating her with respect how are you going to be respectful to god so so that's that so we'll move on to the oh did anyone have anything they want to add period to either of the, the points we went over all right moving on last point reinforce the fellowship i need one reader to finish this last point and then we'll be done for the night One more reader, one more reader. I can read first. Thank you, Roxy. Reinforce the fellowship. Next, Paul appeals to common sense by writing, judge in yourselves. Is it commonly that a woman pray unto God uncovered? In other words, is it proper to go against socially accepted practices of modesty and respect? Of course not. Next, Paul writes, 
Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. The principle is men should look like men and women should look like women. God doesn't like anything that blurs the distinction of the sexes. So the natural question arises in regard to men's hair. How long is too long? The answer is, it is too long if it makes a man look like a woman. Regarding a woman's hair, how short is too short? The answer is, it is too short if it makes her look like a man. Finally, Paul writes, but if any man seems to be contentious, we have, such, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. If anyone wants to argue about this issue, Paul writes that all the other churches practice what he has just written. Therefore, such persons are out of step with all churches of Paul's day. The emphasis of this passage is the glorification of womanhood and peace within the church family. Spiritual men and women obey what command in 1 Thessalonians 5.13. Remember to, leave, to live peacefully, peaceable. <laughs> peaceable, I can't see. <laughs> Just live, in, just live in peace with each other yeah. <laughs> in worship respect spiritual leadership <laughs> remember the partnership and reinforce fellowship <laughs> amen <laughs> amen thank you Roxy. it's okay <laughs> I get tongue tied too so reinforce the fellowship basically means strengthen or support um, the fellowship um, I found it interesting that they specifically talked about like the hair for men and women and um and and god basically was said he doesn't like anything that blurs the distinction of us you know and you already know how it is now it's has gotten pretty wild i'll say <laughs> um yeah it's it's a mess right now <laughs> with that so right now sometimes i don't i don't be knowing what's what <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but just um uh just you know the thing is just the fellowship you know living in peace with each other um just making sure that we respect spiritual leadership um remember the partnership and reinforce the fellowship all of that plays a part in worship you know, um, again, just remember anytime we're worshiping, anytime we are in front of God, we should be respectful, you know, with our talk, you know, whatever we read, whatever we listen to, all of that, we're still in the presence of God. We're, we're in the presence of him every day, all day. So just remember that you need to be in worship. You're in worship all the time, basically. <laughs> so. Um, you you just 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 watch yourself you know um you know i know we you know make mistakes here and there but just really just remember um uh, the principles for worship okay does anybody have any questions or any other comments man y'all quiet maybe if i do a cheer y'all a cheer up no I'll just I'll tease that I ain't gonna do no chill. <laughs> but um, I thought tonight was a, a good a good lesson tonight. Principles for worship. Um, next week we will be going over lesson nineteen. Everybody, make sure you read your lessons and do your scriptures. Uh, we will be discussing properly observing the Lord's Supper. So that should be pretty simple because Pastor already kind of taught us about that before so this should be easy um do we have any um prior concerns or anything for tonight all right no prayer concerns all right um there's a, a blessing to have everybody on joey i'm uh, sorry joelle uh, we've been missing you um 
praying that you're doing well and just keep the faith. Just keep the faith and hang in there. And just hang in there. Um, tell Christina, tell Brother Myron, um, hello from us. Oh, he's on. Oh, Lord, he at the top. I'll see him. <laughs> hello, Myron. Good evening to you. <laughs> And um, let's see, Sister Kristen, Sister Kendra, Taylor and Roderick, Sister Mimi and Oriana, just everybody. I'm just happy to, to have everybody on. Um, yeah. Pastor had his camera off on. <laughs> he turned, I mean, oh, I guess he turned it off. All right. Well, um, oh, hey, Myron. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, if we don't, if there's nothing else and no prayer request, request for tonight um because if not you know we have prayer service tomorrow so you could bring the prayers tomorrow tomorrow night um if there is nothing else you have anything pastor are you good you good all right okay um brother ray are you on the no reverend bugaj can you dismiss us yes ma'am i can Okay. I got Elijah, so yeah, brace yourself. <laughs> uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that we learned upon tonight. Master, thank you for just bringing to our attention some of the things, Father God, that we overlook, some things that we pay no attention to or may not seem important to us, Father, but they're important to you. We ask that the things that we learned tonight that we will apply to our lives, Father, not overlook them or uh, put some things to the side. Thank you for the teaching tonight with First Lady. Thank you for being with her spiritually, mentally. Father God, thank you for allowing her to orchestrate tonight. Thank you for the pastor being on with us and everyone on who's joined tonight. We just pray for a safe night, Father God, and ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray and we say amen. 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 Tomorrow, 6.30 pre-worship. 7.15 prayer service. All right. Good night. I love y'all. <laughs> Good, Good night. Love you too. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.